Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Up on the bench is one of my three Sony uh, SLHF 100UBs. Uh, this is the Beta Hi-Fi's. These are really nice machines, I do like these. Um, uh, they're using Beta Hi-Fi to record uh, a very high quality sound on the tape along with the video content. Um, yeah, so you can see there. That's this is the original sticker on top. Uh, so it says uh, 80 decibels, beta hi-fi, uh, and so on. So you can see this was marketed also for its uh, audio capabilities as well as its um, uh, video. Um, we got record levels here, uh, so you can uh, adjust uh, your recording levels for each channel. Uh, you can switch off the beta hi-fi uh, here. Uh, you've got the very standard uh, controls for uh, a mid-80s Sony Betamax. Um, this one has got a problem though, um, and it's something which is a, a recurring problem with this generation of uh, Sony Betamax machines. It's things like the uh, SL, uh, uh, C20, SL C20, C30, C40, I've got all of those. Um, uh, the 100, I think the 900, so is it 950, whatever it is, the higher ones uh, tend to also have it as well. I'm not sure whether the C9 has issue. Um, um, what's happened, and I've done one of these already on the channel, what's happened is that the Hall Effect sensor that monitors the drum rotation speed has failed. And the reason it fails is that uh, Sony decided to put a glue to hold it in that becomes conductive. Um, when it becomes conductive, uh, it starts to mess up all the signals going back to the server control and the machine just stops. And, and the one thing about these machines is that the uh, drum actually spins also when you're in rewind and fast forward as well as play. Um, and so it pretty much stops the machines uh, dead in its tracks. So. Just to demonstrate, I've got a, a Betamax cassette here. This is the film, uh, The China St Syndrome. Really good film. Um, I've actually got, the TV is actually on. You can see it's on there. So if I turn there we go, TV off, uh, the video off. So we've actually got the video there. So I'm going to put the tape in. That's the sound of my childhood right there. That thing loading. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the vi uh, the video. I'm just going to go to um, 50 hertz so you can actually see it. Uh, 50 hertz on my on my camera. Bear with me. Okay, so uh, we're at uh, uh, a shutter speed that actually will be compatible with the uh, TV at 50 hertz here in the UK. Um, Right, here we go. It doesn't take long for it to go wrong. It might even not start. Um, I left it off for quite some time and it started and played for about three seconds, four seconds. Uh, and the drum uh, then basically went out of lock. So I'm going to press play and then you're going to hopefully see uh, the video and then, you, and then you'll slow or see it relatively quickly um, uh, go out of sync and then stop. So, okay, let's try that. Ready? Here we go. Right. Let's see how long it'll go for. I'm probably going to get a content match. Let me just turn that down. Right, and again, it seems to be playing absolutely fine. The clock counter's running along. Uh, I'm not going to come away from the TV just yet. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's <laughs> this is the longest it's actually played in some time. Um, at some point, it will actually drop and through the... Well, the wonders of video editing, I'll probably actually cut out most of this and show you when it goes wrong. 
Okay, so after some faffing around and letting it play for a while, it's actually failed. Uh, so I've taken the cover off and 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 stuff like this. Um, and when I try to press play, that video drum should spin. So if I stop it, and there we go. Yep. So it's not doing anything now. It's basically doing exactly uh, the failure mode I've been having, which is that it's not spinning up the drum. Now, if I spin up that... Now, it's when it, when it actually did fail, I could spin up the actual drum uh, and actually get it going, and then press play, and it would actually play. So yeah, so this is, this is the failure mode I've got. So if I press play now, nothing. Spin the drum, press play, it stops, and basically just holds the actual motor. So, yeah, it's 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 not not working. <laughs> it's not working. So, yes. So I will be taking the uh, uh, the Hall effect sensor out. I showed previously. Uh, it I, <laughs> it's weird. Most of the time, it would actually fail pretty much within like a few seconds of running. Uh, this one took about 10 minutes. There we are. So we are doing a Hall Effect Sensor uh, repair on this one. So, right, okay. Let me turn it back over and we can then start uh, dismantling this thing. And I'll do a sort of step-by-step, -step, as much as I can, uh, repair guide on this. So the first step is to uh, sort of just point out what I'm going to be taking apart and what needs to come apart. Uh, uh, through the whole process and it's not that difficult um so we've got the main drum here uh so we're going to take off this guide here just so it's out of the way uh these connectors here go all the way back down and they go into here so we actually because we need to pull the drum out we actually have to disconnect basically open up this part here uh trace all the wires which are coming from underneath and i'll show you that in a minute and also from the top here uh, into there. This might actually just be able to leave, disconnect this and leave that connector here. Um, uh, I think the yeah, it's possible that might. Um, but certainly the the rest of the drum connections uh, need to um, uh, be pulled through because we're going to be lifting the entire drum out. Um, so let me just turn it turn the machine up on its, on its uh, side, and we can have a look at the other side. So this is the bottom of the drum. Um, again, these are the three screws which actually hold the drum in, and these are actually held in. Uh, let me sorry, let me, uh, with uh, there's actually springs. So let me just zoom in and see whether I can uh, get a better view of that. I don't know whether you can see that, but there we are. There's the spring. So it's basically uh, uh, held onto the actual chassis but, uh, and, uh, with springs. Um, this is to allow the actual drum to move occasionally. Um, so if we go back out here. Um, so these are the main connections in and they run out into the machine. Uh, this one which goes across to here and there's other ones that go out to the main syscon boards over uh, there. So, what I've worked out uh, uh, through experience is that before I even take this entire drum out, is I undo that uh, bolt here because it's much harder to do it on the bench uh, without damaging the heads uh, than it's actually in there. So I will be undoing that bolt first uh, and uh, just lo loosening it up and then tracing all the wires back out, disconnecting them, feeding them back through to here, uh, and then I, I, and then the drum goes that way out of the machine. Um, if you actually look, uh, I've already done this before, uh, if you look on my channel for uh, 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 Betamax C40 and search on that, you'll see that I've already done this on a, on a two-head Betamax machine, um, uh, the, my uh, linear stereo machine, which is currently in my bedroom, I think, somewhere like that anyway. Yeah, I use it for watching stuff. Uh, and that was done uh, two years ago. Yeah, just over two years ago. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just, 
these little hall effect sensors, they just fail. Um, so, uh, and it's just a, a, you have to basically take this apart and then pull the um, uh, circuit board out so you can actually then desolder it and put a new one in. Um, so, okay, let's uh, just undo that uh, and then uh, we'll then start taking the rest of it apart. So I've used my trusty little uh, socket set to uh, just undo that bolt there and that's sorry that nut there and uh, and so yeah that's ready to go so I can just try turn that back again that's fine um, I might try and find my stand uh, for for my camera unfortunately my main one broke uh, so hence the reason why I'm doing freehand at the moment so let me see if I can find something so I can put you on the stand and you can watch me uh, as I start to take stuff apart okay so I've done the bolt there uh, and what I need to do is try and trace these cables so let's actually even disconnect it from the mains uh. go into that and so this looks like it's never been touched so I think this is a, uh, a, a virgin repair never any bit been anywhere near it so So we are pretty good at actually uh, making connectors that you can only put in one uh, certain ways. Come on, come on, there we go. There we go. So here we are. Now, in the past, I've recapped one of these. <laughs> it was interesting. It was very, very interesting to do. Uh, it took a long time, a lot of effort. And again, a lot of these cables are going up through there. So, um, okay, I'm going to pause for a second here and... Uh, Go and have my dinner and then i'm going to come back to this this isn't this is a, a long job so this is not a, a quick and simple job it even though you can get to the damn thing and see it you've got to take half of the machine apart okay so i fixed my tripod so i've now got you back actually up at the right height So what I've got to do is work out, these are the connections going onto these boards here. I need to work out what ones of these actually go to the video head down here. And it's not as easy as you think. Um, so, uh, I do think, it, it, the trouble is, you, it, in some ways you need to actually take the whole board out. Uh, but I don't really want to, because I don't want to, I've got a lot of connections all over, loose here. And the more connections you have, loose the harder it is to get everything back in the right place so um yeah you know, give me a minute while i try and work, work this all out i think it's these ones here um that's where the video head drum goes i think so i'm gonna take those off give a give a wiggle that goes to the top that one, this one, oh yeah that, that one goes, I can feel that tugging, 
and so then I think use these. I'm going to have to put this down, it's so hard to do up on the thing, so yeah, let me, alright, so we've got one, and you just have to keep on doing it again and again, so, uh, until you've got them all, so. So I've actually got the connectors for the video head drum, for the power of it anyway, there. So next I'm going to take this one out and I'll take it out fairly carefully without pulling on the cables. Might have to actually. <laughs> there we go. Just get rid of the the um, guys the tape at the top of the drum. Let's ease that down. So we have one. Come on. So have two cables coming in from the servo here and then we've then got two uh, cables which go into the video circuit well actually one cable I should say one cable two, two connect two cables one connector and we just undo that let's put that back on So we have all of the cables for the video drum disconnected. Next. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to actually tape up the video drum so it doesn't move. And trust me, this is a needed step because um, the very first one I ever did, I actually destroyed the video heads by accidentally touching them in the, in the wrong way so i'm just going to get a little bit of so at the moment this spins freely uh, yeah there we go let's just turn that round turn you around a little bit there we go so the drum spins freely what i want to do is stop the drum from moving as much as I can. Yep. Just so when I'm pulling the actual whole drum out, then um, uh, it's it. I haven't got the head spinning around and potentially catching on something. So, so there we go. Back around here. I'm going to take out these three screws. So there's the screw, there's the spring, and a washer. And there we go. So there's the washer. Spring is on the actual post itself. Um, and yeah, that, that basically uh, allows the drum some uh, movement. So now the whole drum is loose. So what I'm going to do is slowly pull the drum out. There we go. Okay. 
no video here. Right, so we need to push the machine out, out the way. So, yeah, so video head out. Um, you can now sort of see how it actually fits in there and the mechanism actually wraps around the video head. So yeah, that's good. So here's the drum. So you've got the video heads there. Two on that side and two on that side. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get a piece of paper and stick it around the drum while I'm working. So um, again, there we go. Um, it's safer to actually put a piece of uh, a, a slice a piece of A4 paper and just tape it around the drum just to protect the heads as I've got the actual drum out. What we want is the circuit board inside here. And we want to take that out so we can unsolder the Hall effect sensor. Um, I'm going to take that off of there, but I'm just going to protect the heads right now. on there so yeah it's just it's just more of a uh, a safety net f for me um, just something just so that if anything I, I can actually now sort of hold the sides uh, I still don't want to do, touch anywhere near there because I could actually move up and down sorry there we go so yeah so I could actually move this up and down and uh, uh, and cause things it's just a a little bit of a safety net so okay let's un let's take this out now I know from past experience getting the magnet off of here because this is a great big magnet Getting it off is a pain, and I end up denting things, so let's see if we can get this, there we go, that one's come off remarkably easily, there we go, so it's a that's the magnet there, and then we then have the the coils which spin the drum, and we finally get to see um, the little Hall effect sensor just there. So I now need to get this circuit board out. Big screwdriver. <laughs> and that side. Again, trying to get this board off of here. Uh, for some reason, this one seems to want to stay where it is. So I've got some sort of glue. There we go. We have the drum itself. Um, again, that's all of the signals that come out of the drum. So it uses a, a slip ring, uh, like an induction. Uh, system whereby the, the actual heads uh, are actually spinning inside a, a, a ring of wire uh, so yeah that's how that works and then we then actually have the motor itself and you've got uh, four capacitors which I will replace I just need to double check I've got them yep I've got the, I've got the capacitors there 
so I'm gonna so now I can actually get this is the that's the little um, Hall effect sensor there and now I can get to the back of it to actually desolder it because I couldn't before and while I'm there I'll do the um, capacitors there, the one microfarad um, 50 volt capacitors. This is a basically a three phase motor controller just here with its, uh, the chip there does pretty much all of the work uh, and that chip needs to be told where the actual drum is and let's just put that there and you have uh, a little extra magnet just there that's, that's there and that then spins past the actual motor and basically tells the um, three phase motor chip um, yeah, one, one, two, three. Yeah, um, where it, where the position is. So, so I'll reflow a lot of this stuff. I uh, don't want to come back in here again. That's better. There we go. So as you can see, this is the gunk that the uh, Sony put in there just to keep the actual little Hall effect sensor, the little chip down, um, and it basically corrodes the Hall effect sensor legs and also causes. Um, uh, spurious um, it causes some of the signals to sort of be uh, mixed in with in between the legs so it sort of sort of creates uh, like a mini short circuit type thing because uh, it's uh, the actual glue becomes conductive um, yeah that's looking rubbish you can see the actual uh, rust on that so yeah so we're going to do that and we're also going to do all of the solder points on here make sure they're all good and also those four capacitors so let's spin up the desolder gun so there's the new the new uh, hall effect sensor and there's the old one So I'm just going to desolder the capacitors. Putting on the capacitor tester, or the component tester, I should say. Yes, I was high. Losses are low. I'm still going to replace them while I'm here. That's the other one. So they're all done, so I just need to solder them up. So that's all done. Then the other side. New capacitors are in uh, and they're around the right way. I actually checked on the actual uh, circuit board there. Yeah, so the negatives are all in the right position. 
Um, I'm just going to quickly whiz over all of this and just reflow some of the joints. I just need something thin to get underneath. There we go. And then I can pull that out. There we go, that's the part. Tiny little sensor, tiny little chip. So just cleaning all of the old glue out. It's very fiddly. The IPA tends to soften it up a little bit and then you've got to scrape the rest out. But you do need to get all of it out because it's conductive. Right. So we've managed to get all of the glue out there and these these little legs are splayed in a particular pattern and I have to recreate that. The way we know what side the chip should be, the little hollow sensor chip, is by a small, let's try and get, I don't know whether you can see it in the camera but there's a small circle embossed into the actual thing so I know exactly what side is up. You can see where the actual holes go, I've splayed the legs in that pattern and so I've just got to thread them, the legs through those holes. So I've got the new sensor in those holes, splayed out the legs in the right pattern, and they've come through the other side. I don't need any glue on these at all. The glue's there to stop it from touching the, um, the magnet. And thread all of these whole uh, wires through so that's the main board back at the motors uh, the three fa uh, phases of the motor coils attached and then adjust the so that is now back in and soldered on I just need to sort of clean this all up and that's the repair done. So that's uh, all four capacitors um, and the uh, Hall effect sensor re uh, replaced. Uh, I'm just going to tidy this up. I'll use a bit of isopropanol and a, and a brush just to clean up the whole area. And put this back, put the cable back in the cable management system thing there and there we are just make sure they're tight but not too tight this and again I'm not going to try and tighten this up right now so I don't want this I don't want to spin the heads so there we are that's the repaired video head with its new Hall effect sensor uh, and also uh, four new capacitors for the mo one microfarad 50 volt uh, capacitors which were in, in there. So that's all done. So let's get this back into the machine. machine back in come on you little bugger go in there we go right so drums back in there we go that's one I will tighten it up in just a sec. 
Cool. So, drums back in. Uh, Plug this cable back in. Push these cables back up through. Right, so I just need to clip those back in, and that's pretty much everything done on this side. Everything else is now on the other side. So I will. Uh, there we are. That's all good. So let's move this back to here. I can put the tape guide back on now. So this has this has little arms and that touches the top of the tape and just keeps the tape pushed down onto the lip uh, around the drum which actually keeps it all in place. So it's just purely for tightening. That's all the tension across the tape. I've got all the boards back into the machine, uh, everything's all bolted down. Uh, I had one black connector I struggled to actually uh, find and I eventually noticed I tucked it away somewhere. So what I'm going to do is put you up on the, uh, back up on the stand again and let's uh, see whether this uh, video drum spins. Let's see what we get. Let's see whether we get a picture, whether I've destroyed the heads or whatever. Play. Mm, that's interesting, we have a problem at the top of the... Hmm. Let me just double check the tape, hold on. Try number two. Oh, I know what I haven't done. <laughs> I haven't bolted the uh, uh, the magnet back down to the drum. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, so it uh, when I first tested the machine, there was all sorts of weird stuff going on. Uh, what I've done is actually uh, removed the, uh, the screws which hold the head in, and I've essentially jiggled the head around and reseated it, and then put it uh, back in, and I get... A picture so yes I haven't broken it when um, uh, I jiggled it around uh, the first time I actually got the picture but I got no sound and the reason I've got no sound is this is this recording is done in beta hi-fi just like VHS hi-fi um, and it wasn't locking on to the audio signal on the actual uh, tape through the heads um, uh, I think it was because this was out of alignment um, so after jigger, some jiggery pokery, um, yeah. Is that me or is that actually, that's pulsing? Yeah, that's bloody well pulsing. What's going on? Some sort of pulsing going on. On the video drum. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it's going out. It's going out of lock. Look, it's going out of lock. That's the drum slowing down. Wow. That's an interesting failure. And you can hear the motor actually um, uh, increase some torque on the, the head or slow down. I don't know. Try another head just in case it's a a control pulse issue. Is it just it's 
pulsing again. Wow. Okay. I think I need to actually check out everything here. Um, and actually I might take the head back out again um, and check absolutely everything. Do you know, literally not all the cables out, but just um, the basics and see what happens. Sounds like something's dragging on the motor or something's pulling it down. Maybe one of those capacitors I've put in isn't good. It's getting slower and slower and slower. It's as if it's struggling, the motor's struggling. How weird. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put it on um, slow mode and see what happens. Okay, so this is where I've made a mistake and I've got to take the whole head out and, and change the capacitors. What I didn't realise, and I just looked, it's been a while since I've done one of these, uh, I thought all four capacitors were point, uh, sorry, zero, uh, 1 microfarad at 50 volts. Turns out that two of them are 0 0.1 at 50, volt, 50 volts. So I've put one microfad across all, all of them uh, and that was incorrect so I've got to take this all apart again <sighs> okay this is what happens when your eyes are starting to fail and it's and you're tired and it's about nine o'clock at night so right okay let's 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 take it all apart again okay so um I managed to work out what was going on uh, and looking back reviewing my footage um, there I can actually see where the positions of the actual capacitors and it turned out two of them are 0 0.1 and two of them are 1 and I didn't see that so I've just uh, sort of disassembled resoldered the whole lot and I'm about to put it back together again so that was my mistake um, again it's two 0 0.1 microfarad and two uh, and one and two one microfarads. Let's get this back in. <laughs> I'm getting annoyed with this. Right. Okay. I've had the whole. I said whole thing back uh, to bits again. Replaced the two capacitors. I got the wrong values, uh, which were I put uh, one microfarad rather than zero. Uh, it should have been zero point one microfarad. And we get a good solid picture one small issue <laughs> there's the, the audio and that's actually coming from the linear stereo tracks rather than from the video head so if I switch it to the video head I get no sound and what's happened is one of the cables has actually snapped And we get sound. Yeah. Okay. So I need to work out what I need to do to fix that without actually mullering it and all, and all the connections around it. So if I turn it back to linear audio, we get perfect sound. So, so yeah. Um, Apart from that one cable, we are back to square one with the machine. Near enough square one. Um, picture's good. Nice solid picture. Yeah. Seems much, much happier. Um, yeah, that's it really. And again, it's just taking the, the connector on and off uh, over the past couple of attempts. 
Um, it's so difficult to actually try and pull it from the white part. I've had to pull it from the ground and it's popped out. So, so I'm just going to try and fix that. And then hopefully um, we'll have a hi-fi stereo. I might even just bridge from the solder joint to the wire and then call it a day. I'm not sure yet. I'll see what I can do. Right, okay, I'm going to leave this on test. Main thing is we've got a picture and it's a good, nice, nice, clean, good picture. And we've even got audio from the linear tracks. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that just for now. Right, I'm going to have head in for bed because it's quite late. Uh, and then I'm going to look at this in the morning and actually try and fix it in the morning. Okay, so it's the morning um, and uh, I've been working on this uh, early this morning. Uh, again, nice rock solid stable picture. Uh, really quite good actually. It's a, a, a pretty decent picture. Um, and the fix for the audio problem I had at the moment, I've got the uh, it actually in beta mode. That's in normal beta, and as you can see, the uh, the level meters are still running. So it's I've actually done the fix, and what I've done to the broken wire is rather than try to put heat into the uh, let's 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 switch to a a better zoom mode. Hold on a minute, that's better. Um, the uh, mode I use so that you can see the TV doesn't zoom in very well. So. As you can see there, um, uh, that was the little white wire which actually broke off of the connector. Now rather than putting heat into the connector and melting things and stuff like that, uh, I have just simply taken the end off of a, a, a capacitor, uh, one of the new ones, and I've created a little um, uh, connection up to the main PCB for the wire. Uh, and what I'm probably going to do is put some uh, hot snot, some... Uh, 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 hot glue all over that that, that area just to uh, on that circuit board just to hold that in the, in place so it's it's good. Um, but yeah, that's a a perfectly acceptable fix. Uh, if I do have to take it apart, then okay, I'll have to take it apart. Um, I just want to make sure that that doesn't move. I don't think it will. Um, but yeah, that actually worked really well. So that's uh, let's just zoom back out again. Um, yeah, it's. It's working uh, well again. So yeah, I'm I'm really pleased with this. This was a uh, a good fix. Um, uh, straightforward, uh, apart from my uh, lack of ability to actually read capacitor values. Um, uh, low, to, low to be fair, I I, I um, <laughs> uh, when I actually looked at the actual writing on the capacitors, uh, it was quite blurry. So um, um, so yeah, a little bit. Anyway, right. Thanks for watching. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, small channel. Uh, I hope this was uh, instructional to uh, people. Uh, I don't often do instructional stuff because it's more entertainment. Uh, but this one is a, a very common fault, and hopefully this will give somebody um, uh, some sort of guidance on on how to change their whole effect sensor. Um, see you on the next video.